let's go back to the winter of 1621 to a small spit of land just north of Cape Cod called Plymouth Rock. It's here that some religious settlers from Europe decided to set up a colony that would one day become the New World. It was a brutally cold winter, and for three months they didn't see anybody. Until this dude named Samoset walked up to their camp and said to them in English, Welcome, welcome, Englishmen. But have you ever thought about what Samoset was wearing in this iconic American myth? Just a loincloth. That was it. It was the sort of outfit that would make any one of us want to curl up into a little ball and just try to like, keep all the heat in. But how was it that Samoset was so comfortable in such a cold condition? How was it that he was immune to the elements? Was it this resistance something locked in his genetic code that was just there, or is it something that r lies in all of us? I began to understand the answer to this question about six years ago when I met this guy. That's Wim Hof, Dutch daredevil fitness guru. He holds a fistful of world records for dunking himself in the ice water for longer than anyone else, swimming under polar ice caps, and getting up three quarters of the way Mount Everest in just a pair of shorts and no shirt. So Wim Hof can do some pretty great and sort of crazy things. But when I heard about him, he claimed something even greater than that, that he could teach other people to do these same feats. And not only that, not only could he, you, he teach you to control your body temperature at will, but also your immune system. And when I heard these claims, I figured that he was a liar. <laughs> that he was charging money to make you sort of superhuman. And even worse than that, I figured that he could get people killed, right? Well, he's not the first false guru that I had unmasked in print. Recently, I'd just written a book about another guy teaching that through Tibetan Buddhist meditation, he could make you an angel. And one of his followers who was following this uh, technique ended up meditating until he died in a cave in Arizona. I built my career debunking figures like this Wim Hof guy. I still had to give Wim Hof a chance, right? I mean, you can't just go and lay into someone and print. So I flew to Poland, where he had a training center, to try his method myself. And it only took a few days to figure out that Wim Hof was onto something. Within a week, I was climbing snowy mountains in a winter that stopped Napoleon's army on his march to Moscow. Okay? It was the same winter that stopped the Nazi blitzkrieg, and here I was, sweating, not freezing. And the method is fairly straightforward. You start by some gradual cold exposure. Go out and stand in the snow. And then you work your way up to maybe sitting in some ice water. And then, <laughs> you can do things like meditate on a riverbank until the snow melts around you, and the key is to suppress your shiver response, and redirect that clenching feeling that we all have in the cold, which is a signature of the fight or flight responses. And when you do that, you're trying to heat your body with muscle movement. Now, by redire redirecting it and not shivering, you actually force your metabolism to take over those heating duties. We also learned a breathing method, which is hyperventilating, then holding our breath, and then hyperventilating and holding our breath. And I kept on doing that until I could hold my breath for three minutes at a time with empty lungs. So these relatively simple techniques to learn, you can learn them in about 15 minutes, did not give me superpowers. What they gave me were human powers. And as recently as 400 years ago, when the pilgrims met Samoset, it was something that they found so alien. But the thing is that this comes down to human evolution. Our species, and I'm talking about Homo sapien sapien, has walked the earth for about 200,000 years. In that time, we endured crippling cold 
and scorching heat. We trekked out of the Middle East, over the Alps, over the Himalayas. We even populated the New World without a whisper of what any one of us would consider modern technology. Yes, we had leather shoes and maybe some bows and arrows. We even had boats to get to the New World. But our most valuable asset in all of this has been our body. It doesn't matter whether it's a snowstorm or a scorching sun. Our bodies had to be, our bodies had to adapt quickly if we wanted to survive and pass on our genes, which means that you are the descendant of an evolutionary winner. So why does it seem so crazy, these feats of our past. What was it about our ancestors that was so much stronger? Or in other words, why are we so much weaker now? Well, the difference between your Paleolithic grandfather and grandmother and us is that we have the ability to manipulate the world around us with technology. And driving a lot of that technology is this feeling of comfort that we all want to embrace. Blizzard outside, scorching weather, it doesn't matter. We can live in a perpetual climate of about 72 degrees, which is eternal summer. It's this narrow band of comfort, which is so attractive to this inner nervous system, our inner jellyfish that just want to be comfortable all the time. And the technologies that have allowed this to happen, central heating, air conditioning, uh, that cool polar fleece that you wear. It's only arrived here in the blink of an evolutionary eye. And that means that that hidden biology that we have to adapt to the changing environment around us lies dormant. And this is a problem. Take, for example, the basic mammalian response of vasoconstriction. Your body has about 60,000 miles of tubing in it. Uh, there are arteries that take blood away from your heart and veins that bring it back. And along the arteries are something called smooth muscle, which will contract to bring the blood into your core if you're cold. Now, if you were to plunge into ice water right now, that would squinch with so much force that the, your hands would just be incredibly cold. But you actually have to get cold and actually feel that sensation in order to activate that muscular response. There's never been any evolutionary pressure to put it under conscious control. And that means that the vast majority of us who live under climate control conditions never experience vasoconstriction. We don't see temperature and the environment in the same way as we do, say, exercise which means someone with that perfect gym body, six-pack abs and big bulging muscles, like my friend Channing Tatum over here, could be hiding very weak circulatory muscles. And vasoconstriction is just the tip of the iceberg. There's an entire hidden biology honed to deal with various environmental conditions. Extreme heat will let your pores encourage evaporation. If you go into the cold, you will ramp up your metabolism. If you go to altitude, you get more red blood cells in order to compensate for the decreased oxygen. And this brings me back to Samoset. The Algonquin nurtured their underlying biology by not building barriers between themselves and the environment. In childhood, they would take their infants and put their infants in the snow for 15 minutes at a time before bringing them back inside. It's the same technique that Scandinavians use to today, and Russians, and indigenous people all over the world. And what this does is build a resistance to the elements that will last your whole life. And you can also build this in adulthood as well. The conditioning activates metabolic processes in your body that will suck white fat from your system and transform it directly into heat energy. Now think about this, that spare tire that many of us carry around our waist is not there because you're waiting to get into a place where you have no food, that you're starving. It's actually kindling for your metabolism to heat you up in a cold environment. That's right, this is a message for Oprah's book club. <laughs> the cold will let you lose weight. 
For several hundred years, human health has rested on twin pillars of diet and exercise. It's always been about the food you bring into your body and how you use it with your muscles. But there is a third pillar of the environment which is as equally important. It's not just vasoconstriction. This hidden biology also includes the immune system, insulin regulation, endurance and respiration, and all of that is below your conscious mind. And there's no better time than right now to try to undo some of that comfortable conditioning. You can start with a cold shower. And I know this is the hardest thing that a human can do. You sit there under that warm water and you turn to that knob and turn it to cold. I know it's hard, but I believe in you. <laughs> the key is to one that water is on you to sit there and relax into it. And instead of clenching up and heating yourself up with your muscles, let your metabolism do that job and it will just do it automatically. Another thing you can do is turn down your thermostat in the winter. Bring it down to about 62 degrees. Or, in the summer, turn off your air conditioning. This will put your body in touch with the seasonal variations that you're not getting if you live in summer all year round. You'll also save on heating, so that's cool. <laughs> and these simple things really start to trigger some rather extraordinary changes in the body. And I ran an experiment when I was starting this research where I measured my own metabolism at the CU Center for Sports Medicine over here on, on the Boulder campus. And they put me through a VO2 max test, which is a sort of me running on a treadmill as they slowly increased the, uh, the pitch of the running. And as they did that, they hooked me up to this oxygen monitor that saw what sorts of things and energy I was burning. And it was no surprise to me that I would burn mostly uh, granola bars. Uh, it was all carbohydrates that I was burning, which is not really what you want if you're an endurance athlete. Uh, it's very quick sugar. But after six months of training, I went back and I did the same test. And I, not only did I run better, I became a primarily a fat burner. And I know this graph doesn't make a lot of sense when you initially look at it. But to translate this, the, the doctor there said that it was the equivalent of me adding seven hours of cardio exercise every week to my routine. But all I was doing was this breathing method and cold showers. That's the only change I made to my, to my diet and exercise routine, which is hugely efficient. But that wasn't the only thing that changed. I also managed to, I also managed to do some rather incredible things. That's me on the top of Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain in Africa with Wim Hof. And you'll notice I'm not wearing much, but I was warm as I went up this mountain. And I could never have imagined doing anything like this six years ago when I first met Wim Hof. But with these small steps, cold showers, ice baths occasionally, rolling in the snow when I can, exposing myself to environmental variations, I was able to get in touch with that evolutionary power. It's because our bodies know what to do with environmental stimulus. We just have to let them. <laughs>